While you were busy watching the AI wars between OpenAI and Google, something bigger happened. Amazon, the company that sells you books and toothpaste, quietly became one of the most influential chip designers in cloud computing. Last week, at AWS reInvent 2025, Amazon unveiled Graviton 5, a 192-core processor that, according to AWS's own benchmarks, delivers up to 45% better performance per watt than contemporary Intel Xeon chips. And here's the part most people missed. AWS has publicly stated that a majority of the new compute capacity it has added in recent years runs on its own silicon, not Intel's, not AMD's. When the world's largest cloud provider starts replacing merchant CPUs with its own chips, that's not just a product launch. That's a fundamental shift in who controls cloud computing. Let's start with the basics. Graviton 5 packs 192 cores into a single socket. It's built on TSMC's 3 nanometer manufacturing process using ARM's Neoverse V3 Poseidon cores. The chip includes 192 megabytes of shared L3 cache, support for DDR5-7200 memory with a roadmap to DDR5-8800 and PCIe 6.0 connectivity. On paper, these specs look impressive. But the real story is in what Amazon did differently from the previous generation. Graviton 4, the predecessor, used a dual socket design with two 96 core processors connected together for a total of 192 cores. That sounds fine until you understand how cross socket memory access works. When a core on one processor needed data stored on the other processor's memory, it had to travel across an interconnect between the two chips. Dave Brown, an AWS vice president, explained that, depending on the workload, this cross-socket memory access could take up to approximately three times longer than local memory access. For latency-sensitive applications like real-time databases, online gaming servers, or high-frequency analytics, that variability creates performance bottlenecks. Graviton 5 eliminates this problem by moving to a single-socket design. All 192 cores and all 192 megabytes of L3 cache exist on one unified chip. According to AWS, this architectural change reduces intercore latency by roughly one-third compared to the previous generation. What this means practically is more predictable performance for workloads that depend on fast, synchronized data sharing across cores. Applications that constantly coordinate between threads, that shuffle data across cores, or that rely on low latency cache coherence see measurable improvements. The cache system is equally important. Graviton 5 carries five times more L3 cache than Graviton 4 and provides approximately 2.6 times more cache per individual core. Cache is essentially the processor's fastest memory tier. When data lives in cache, the CPU can access it in just a few clock cycles. When it has to go out to main DRAM memory, that access takes significantly longer. The larger cache in Graviton 5 means fewer trips to DRAM, which materially improves performance for memory-intensive workloads. AWS reports that the new M9G instances running on Graviton 5 deliver approximately 25% more compute performance than the Graviton 4-based M8G family. What makes this particularly notable is that Graviton 4 used two processors while Graviton 5 uses one. Amazon is delivering more performance with less physical complexity, reduced latency, and a simpler coherence model. The memory subsystem supports DDR5-7200 currently, with plans to support DDR5-8800 in the future, giving the system the bandwidth needed to feed 192 cores continuously. Now let's talk about efficiency, because this is where the numbers get interesting. ADOS reports that depending on workload, Graviton 5 delivers approximately 40 to 45% better performance per watt compared to contemporary Intel Xeon processors. These comparisons are based on ADOS internal benchmarks running specific cloud workloads. Performance per watt matters enormously at hyperscale. When you're operating millions of servers across global data centers, every watt of electricity translates to operating costs, cooling requirements, and infrastructure capacity. A 40% improvement in efficiency across an entire fleet represents significant economic leverage.
Amazon designed Graviton 5 with versatility in mind. Ali Saidi, an AWS distinguished engineer, explained that while the compute nodes themselves include two sockets, the instances customers receive run on one processor. The reason is workload flexibility. Cloud usage patterns vary dramatically throughout the day. Morning hours might see heavy high-performance computing tasks, scientific simulations or batch analytics. Evening hours might shift to gaming servers, streaming infrastructure or consumer-facing applications. Amazon wants a single CPU architecture that can efficiently handle both scenarios without sitting idle or being underutilized. This versatility is supported by the chip's I.O. capabilities. Graviton 5 is among the first server CPUs to ship with PCI 6 Pro support, which doubles the bandwidth of PCI 5.0. This matters because AWS is rapidly expanding its AI infrastructure. Earlier this week, Amazon announced Trainium 3 Ultra, their most powerful AI training system to date. The system delivers over four times the performance improvement compared to the previous Trainium generation. And for the first time, the entire stack, including CPU, accelerators and networking, is built entirely on Amazon's own silicon. Graviton 5 is also paired with Nitro 6, AWS's latest smart network interface card. Nitro 6 doubles network throughput to 100 gigabits per second and offloads virtualization and storage tasks from the main processor. It also introduces Nitro Isolation, which AOS describes as providing mathematical guarantees that customer workloads remain separated. As AWS scales to millions of cores across global infrastructure, this form of workload isolation becomes increasingly critical for security and compliance requirements. At reInvent, AWS revealed that 98% of its top EC2 customers already use Graviton instances. That customer list includes Adobe, Atlassian, SAP, Formula One, Siemens, Airbnb, Pinterest, Snowflake, Synopsys, and Epic Games. Apple publicly credited Graviton for delivering 40% performance improvements and 30% cost reductions in their cloud workloads. These aren't experimental deployments. These are large-scale production systems running business-critical applications. AWS also showcased a use case from 12 Labs, a Korean video AI startup. Their CEO explained how their multimodal video foundation model, which processes video, voice, and temporal data, relies heavily on the performance and scalability that AWS provides. The example illustrates how compute, networking, and storage improvements across the AWS ecosystem converge around Graviton as the central processing engine. The Graviton 5 rollout begins with M9G instances available in preview. Compute-optimized CING and memory-optimized RING variants will arrive in 2026. Amazon uses the same Graviton 5 chip for all three families, adjusting memory capacity and memory-to-core ratios to match different workload requirements. AWS also announced that Graviton 5 provides 15 to 20% more network and storage bandwidth per core compared to Graviton 4. For workloads that constantly stream data, replicate across regions or shard databases, these bandwidth improvements translate directly into better throughput. Now, Amazon isn't alone in this shift. Microsoft recently announced Cobalt 200, their second-generation ARM CPU built on TSMC's 3 nanometer process. Cobalt includes 132 cores, each with 3 megabytes of L2 cache and a total of 192 megabytes of shared L3 cache. Microsoft implemented custom memory controllers with default memory encryption and ARM's confidential compute architecture. Google entered with Axion, a smaller but highly efficient ARM server chip offering up to 72 Neoverse V2 cores optimized for high memory workloads. Oracle operates one of the largest fleets of Ampere processors, which also reach 192 cores. This suggests a broader industry trend. Hyperscalers are increasingly designing CPUs optimized for their own workloads rather than relying solely on merchant silicon from Intel and AMD. 
AWS has stated that a majority of new CPU capacity added to AWS in recent years has been based on Graviton. AWS recently reached an annual revenue run rate of $132 billion, and a significant portion of that compute growth is tied to Graviton's price performance characteristics. What does this mean for the broader semiconductor industry? It doesn't mean Intel or AMD disappear. Both companies still serve massive markets including enterprise on-premises deployments, edge computing, and customers who don't have the scale to justify custom silicon but it does mean their influence over cloud infrastructure roadmaps is shrinking. When hyperscalers design their own processes, they control the feature set, the release timeline, the power profile, and the cost structure. That's a fundamental shift from the previous model where cloud providers adapted to whatever Intel and AMD shipped. Control over silicon increasingly means control over cost, efficiency, and deployment speed. Amazon doesn't need to wait for Intel's next generation to arrive. They design exactly what their workloads need and manufacture it when they're ready. Microsoft and Google are following the same path. This doesn't eliminate the role of merchant silicon, but it changes the dynamics of who sets the pace for innovation in cloud infrastructure. For customers, this shift has practical implications. If you're running workloads on AWS, Graviton instances increasingly represent the best price performance option for many use cases. AWS is building its infrastructure around these chips, which means they're optimizing features, investing in software compatibility, and pricing aggressively. The 98% adoption rate among top customers isn't accidental. It reflects real economic incentives. For Intel and AMD, this represents a long-term strategic challenge. Cloud providers collectively represent a massive portion of server CPU demand. As those customers internalize chip design, the addressable market for merchant processes shrinks. Intel and AMD aren't going away, but they're no longer the default choice for hyperscale infrastructure. That's a significant change from the previous 30 years of the industry. Graviton 5 marks a maturation point for Amazon's custom silicon program. Seven years ago, when Graviton 1 launched, it was an experiment. Today, it's the foundation of AWS's compute strategy. As C9G and R9G instances launch next year, Graviton 5 will expand into even more workload types. The message is becoming clear. The future of cloud infrastructure belongs to companies that design their own hardware, optimized for their specific needs and economic models. So here's the question. Do you think cloud customers choose Graviton for performance or because hyperscalers are quietly reshaping the economics of compute? Is this shift good for competition or does it create new forms of vendor lock-in? Share your take in the comments below. If this breakdown helped you understand what's actually changing in cloud infrastructure, hit that like button. And if you want to stay ahead of shifts in computing architecture before they become mainstream narratives, subscribe and turn on notifications. Because the chip landscape is being redrawn in real time and most people aren't paying attention yet. I'll see you in the next one.